Hello viewer, my name is Warren Okaba from Moy Forces Academy. You are watching Elemu TV. Welcome to the Science Hub. And my partner? I am Washington Kumani. Alright, so today we are going to do a topic on form, in Form 4 known as Electromagnetic Spectrum. So, what is Electromagnetic Spectrum? This is the arrangement of electromagnetic waves in order either of increasing wavelengths or decreasing frequencies. So what is uh, a wave, Washington? A wave is a form of energy that can be moved from one place to another. Yes, we have heard that. A wave is a form of energy. Therefore, these waves in the electromagnetic spectrum contain different amounts of energy. And before we get to that, we can arrange them because that was electromagnetic spectrum is in their order of frequencies. So we'll start with the most, with the one with the highest frequency which is gamma rays. So we have a type of acronym for you to remember. It goes ZU, GX, then U, V, I, M, R. G is for gamma rays. Gamma rays. X for X-rays. U for ultraviolet. V for visible light, I for infrared, M for microwaves, and R for radio waves. So these are the electromagnetic waves that form the electromagnetic spectrum. In this order is in the order of decreasing frequencies, meaning that gamma rays have the highest frequencies and radio waves the lowest frequencies. And something that we should know that is the frequency of an electromagnetic wave is inversely proportional to its wavelength. Therefore, with gamma rays having the highest frequency, it also means that they have the longest wavelengths. So therefore, radio waves have the shortest wavelengths. So in this order of Zuvima, Zuvima, this is in the order of increasing wavelengths. So if they form the electromagnetic spectrum and they are all electromagnetic waves, they all have common properties. What are these properties that um, we all share? So electromagnetic waves have the following properties. They travel through, through space in the speed of light, which is denoted by C. They, they don't require any medium for transmission. They are transverse in nature, and they carry no charge. And uh, one thing he's going to explain is that they possess energy according to the relation E is equals to HF. E is equal to HF. This H here denotes the Planck's constant. Planck constant. So the Planck's constant is what allows us to find the amount of energy contained in an electromagnetic wave. So as we say, in order, the highest frequency, lowest frequency. And according to this equation, we can automatically conclude that the one with the highest frequency will obviously contain the highest energy content. Um, as he had also mentioned, there is also C is equal to F times lambda. As I had mentioned earlier, frequency and wavelength are inversely proportional. Wavelength, this is its sign, as we had um, learned earlier in other topics involving waves. This F is for frequency, which varies from one electromagnetic wave to the other. This C stands for velocity. Because there is also the equation of V is still equal to frequency times wavelength. So this C is not velocity for just anything, it is for the speed of light. Speed of light is 3 times 10 to power 8 meters per second. So you can always find 
V frequency using this equation, provided that you're being provided with the wavelength of the electromagnetic wave, because speed of light does not change. All right, let us know some other properties. Okay, um, we can look at how we can apply these formulas that we have just learned in equations. All right. We can take for example and say green light has a wavelength of 5 times 10 to power negative 7. Green light has a wavelength of 5 times 10 to power negative 7 meters. Calculate the energy it emits. Wavelength of 5 times 10 to power negative 7 meters. Calculate the energy it emits. We go back to the equation that we had written. The energy it contains if E is equal to theta. And we have been given the wavelength. The wavelength lambda is 5 times 10 to power negative 7 meters. We can see from here that it is not involved in this equation. But we also have another equation. For C is equal to F lambda. Speed of light is equal to the frequency of that electromagnetic wave times its wavelength. So, we can always find the frequency. So, the frequency will divide both sides by lambda and make F the subject of the formula. We can find it by saying 3 times 10 to power 8 divided by this wavelength that we have here, which is 5 times 10 to power negative 7. When we do so, we will find the frequency. We will find the frequency and we can just take it just the way it is and multiply by the Planck's constant. The Planck's constant is, um, at times it varies, but normally it is given as 6.63 times 10 to the power negative 34. When you do so, you will find the energy content of that electromagnetic wave and energy the SI unit is in joules. Therefore, the value you'll get will be in joules. Alright, so we can move on to production and the detection of electromagnetic waves. We will start with, um, according to Zuvima, we'll start with gamma rays. Gamma rays, as we know, they have the highest frequency. Highest frequency will also mean that highest, will, it will have the highest energy content. Okay, so gamma rays are emitted by radioactive substances. This results from energy changes resulting from energy changes occurring in the nuclei of these radioactive substances. The detection, they're detected by photographic plates and radiation detectors. Um, radiation detectors, we have an example of the Jija Mula tube. The Jijamula tube is um, a type of ionization chamber, but it will be discussed later on in the syllabus, not in this topic. Gamma rays, they also have uses. Since they have the highest frequency, it also means that they have the highest energy content. This high energy content also means that they have the highest penetrating power. By having the highest penetrating power, they can be used in hospitals, they can be used in hospitals in sterilizing medical equipment by killing cancerous and other malignant growths. Again, we can go back to the concept of the high penetration power because they can be used to detect flaws in metals. They are the only ones which can do this because they have such high energy content that they are the only red electromagnetic wave that can penetrate the metal surfaces. And we all know how hard metals are. So you can remember gamma rays for that. We so so you've got the next ray, which are X-rays. X-rays are produced in an X-ray tube and are detected by photographic, photographic film on the fluorescent screen. The areas of these X-rays from hospitals, they are used for cancer therapy because they are capable of killing malignant growth in body tissues. They are also used for controlling pests or germs by radiation. Another use, um, they detect forgeries in art 
and he also used in crystallography, which is the study of the crystal crystallized patterns of Okay, we can move on to ultraviolet radiation. So ultraviolet radiation is produced by the sun, which uh, we all know, sparks and also mercury vapor lamps. It is also produced by, or rather due to large energy changes in the electrons of an atom. This ultraviolet radiation is detected by photographic films, also by photocells, and it can also be detected by fluorescent materials. Fluorescent materials. So, fluorescent materials, this is the spelling. Fluorescent materials are materials that are able to glow. So, whenever they glow, you will know that they have detected ultraviolet rays. And it can also be detected by paper lightly smeared by Vaseline. So, we can move on to ultraviolet radiation or other ultraviolet ray uses. So, they um, are used to detect forgeries and also they are used, these materials, fluorescent materials, they can be mixed with washing powders. So, when they are mixed with washing powders, they now, um, they can be used in cleaning. So, once those clothes have been cleaned, they are now hung out in the sun. So, when those fluorescent materials are acted upon by ultraviolet rays, they will automatically glow and hence have an effect that causes the clothes to become brighter. And uh, the ultraviolet rays are also still have also have a high penetrating power and therefore can also be used to kill bacteria in skin treatment. Ultraviolet rays are also a source of vitamin D. Let's move on. And the next wave is visible light. The major source of visible light is the sun, and other sources include white objects, lamps, and laser beams. When you take this uh, visible light, we have your, our own eyes and the photosynthesis. And also photographic films can do the same. Uh, the uses of visible light is sight, photography, it's used in optical fibers which are in hospitals, and it's used in laser beams. Okay, move on to the next one, which is infrared radiation. Infrared radiation is caused by or produced by small energy changes in the nuclei of an atom. Infrared radiation, so it is also produced by the sun, fires or any hot body. Since it can be produced by any hot body, then we can also conclude that it can be detected by the effect of heat on skin. So you can even detect infrared radiation yourself. Um, also, it can be detected by a thermopile, also by a bolometer, and it can also be detected by a thermometer with a blackened valve. We all know black is a color that can easily, or it, it absorbs heat easily. So therefore, the effect of the infrared radiation, which goes hand in hand with heat, can um, cause uh, the heat to be detected in the thermometer and thus detect infrared radiation. So we can also say that the heat, basically it, it can be used in household activities like cooking or reheating food. Also agriculturally, it can be used in warming greenhouses. Microwaves, um, we have the second shortest wavelength. And uh, you see, microwaves are produced in special vacuum tubes called magnetrons, or also in microwave ovens with a laser. And uh, the detection of these waves is by crystal detectors and solid state diodes. And the, the users of this microwave, as you all well know, use a microwave to cook a warm food, and it's also used in the military. In all right, now to the final wave of the electromagnetic spectrum, which is the radio waves. The radio waves, as we had looked at it earlier, it has the longest wavelength within the electromagnetic spectrum. So they are produced by oscillating electrical circuits and they are transmitted through antennae. We know radio waves from 
radios that we have all seen at some point, and the antennas is what transmits them. So they're detected by resonant circuits in radio receivers. Those resonant circuits are in all of the radio receivers, and they contain diodes and earphones. They contain diodes, and they can also be detected earphones. All right. So we can now move on to the hazards of electromagnetic waves. So as we had looked at it earlier, we had said that waves with high penetrating power can be used. But now we need to know that whenever they are used, they are used in controlled amounts such that they cannot harm those that are using them. Because as we had seen, if a gamma ray is so strong that it can be used to penetrate through metals, then it means that it is used in controlled amounts such that it may not bring any harmful effect to a human being. Mm. This way, when they are exposed to the human body, they may cause skin burns and blisters, and they may also kill body cells. They are exposed to the body uh, for a long time. And uh, when you continue the exposure to this way, it may cause cancer in the future, uh, in the future, and also uh, leukemia to the living. All right, <clears throat> so we have seen how it can affect you, not only in the short term, but also in the long run. So previously in history, we have seen that there have been a few disasters due to probably lack of management of these electromagnetic waves. An example is the Chernobyl disaster, which happened in Ukraine in the year 1986. So many lives were lost. And also, we could say many people never were the same after that day. So the dangers posed by the above radiations can be minimized by reducing the dosage by shielding. So the shielding will reduce the penetration power and also keeping safe distances from these areas. That's why you find wherever there are such activities, you are advised not to stay near them. Even in real life situations, one should not have so many x-rays because in every encounter you come with them, they happen to have an effect on your cells. We have come to the end of our discussion today on the Science Hub. I have been Warren Okaba. I've been Washington. Keep it in.